Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's Grooming Channel, and thank you for joining us on another episode of our vlog, where we discuss grooming industry subjects, usually for aspiring groomers and pet lovers. But today we're going to switch it up a little bit, and we are going to be talking to doodle owners. So people who are thinking about owning a doodle or people who are currently owning a doodle and talk to you about what it means to be a groomer in the doodle world. So I'm going to be titling this vlog as an open letter to doodle owners. So dear doodle owners. I didn't want to say the doodle problem because I didn't want to give a negative connotation to this discussion, even though there is a problem when it comes to doodles and grooming in a universal sense. Um, but I really wanted to come from a place of love, which is very true and very sincere, because some of my favorite clients, some of my best clients are doodles. Uh, so I know that this doodle problem can be overcome. We just have to communicate and we have to talk about it. So that's what we're going to be doing doing here today, coming from a place of love, opening up the lines of communication and dealing with the doodle problem, making sure that we can solve it. Now, the first point that I want to make, and this is important, um, is that doodles have changed the world of grooming in the last decade or so. Um, so because of their popularity, doodles have come out in big force in the last 10 years. And so groomers universally are dealing with this new designer dog, right? The doodles that come in different varieties. And this absolutely has changed the way that groomers deal with grooming from a day-to-day -day perspective. So let's take a look at some of those issues and what we're talking about. The root of the doodle problem, really in essence, is that out of all the dogs that come to grooming salons universally, uh, it seems that doodles are the most likely to be matted. Now, I know I'm saying this just from an observational standpoint, so it's anecdotal um, from my perspective, but this is what I've seen from working with hundreds and thousands of appointments through the years. So these patterns have been built, and of course, I've been talking to uh, groomers, I've been talking to owners, and really been dealing with this doodle problem. So knowing that doodles are usually the dogs that are most likely to come in matted to a grooming salon, this creates a problem because matting can definitely make a grooming experience much worse for the dogs. So let's talk about some of the theories and conclusions I have come to um, out in the field. And so hopefully this will, again, allow us to really understand what we're dealing with a little bit better. So the first point that we really, really need to understand is that doodles require advanced grooming. They fall into the fancy pants advanced grooming category. This is true. So on a scale of 1 to 10, most doodles are sitting very comfortably in that 8 to 10 range. No kidding. They definitely need advanced grooming on a regular basis. So why is this new? Why is this a new point that some people are like, oh, really? Is it 8 to 10? Uh, never really thought about it. Is uh, I'm going to be very honest, is that a lot of uh, the doodle people that I've spoken to have said that their breeders didn't really tell them uh, that these dogs are going to be in the advanced category of grooming. Uh, so we also have to think about the breeders and what they are doing. Obviously, they have the best intentions. Most breeders do. But there's two points. Obviously, they want to sell their puppies. Um, and the second Second point is that because of uh, doodles and their nature, and we're going to talk about this in more detail, is that even the breeders don't really know what the coat's going to turn out to be. Um, so let's delve into that point a little more and understand the doodles coat. So doodle coats can vary very wildly. Um, so I have seen doodles with uh, wiry coats. Those are usually the ones that are easier to handle, easier to manage, and don't mat up that much. And then they range all the way into these cottony coats that the wind can blow and they can mat up. So it's very important to understand that doodles coats can ver very much range, even from the same breeder. So I've seen from the same litter, coats come out on doodles completely differently from that wiry coat on one to a cottony coat on the other. And because of coat change, right, occurring after the puppies have a certain cycle of life, um, you can watch our episode on puppy coat change to understand how that works. Um, so even the breeders, they, with their best intentions, might not know what kind of a coat uh, the puppy will have as they grow. 
So why don't we know? So why does a poodle breeder pretty much know what to expect and a doodle breeder not really know? Now here's the problem, is that we're calling them a designer breed. We're calling them designer dogs, but really what they are is a mix. They are a mix of a poodle and some other breeds, right? So whether it's a golden retriever, a Labrador retriever, uh, a Bernese uh, mountain dog. So we're mixing all of these dogs with a poodle, but it is still a mix. Now there's nothing wrong with the mix and if you want to take a great example of a dog breed that I absolutely adore is the Doberman is a mix of many many different breeds and it took a hundred years for it to actually become its own breed the doodles are relatively new and because uh, the breeders are mixing them uh, mixing the poodle with different different uh, sporting breeds with retrievers uh, we don't really know exactly what the coat is going to be like um, so that is very important to understand that we're dealing with a mixed breed when dealing with doodles and not only are they a mixed breed, we are mixing these breeds with poodles. Okay, this is really, really important because the reason why, um, I, and this is pretty much well known, is that you want to bring out that hypoallergenic quality um, that is touted for the poodle, even though no dog is really completely hypoallergenic. But what makes the poodle hypoallergenic uh, thought to be is that it's a single-coated breed, right? So you're mixing a single-coated breed, right, with a golden retriever, which is a double-coated breed, with a Labrador retriever with a Bernese mountain dog, right? These are all double coated breeds of different lengths and different types. So the variations of what can happen when mixing with a poodle are very wide, right? Uh, so very important to understand that when mixing with a single coated breed, there are interesting things that happen with those types of coats. One of the most interesting things to understand is that a poodle's coat is very unique and it keeps growing. It is an undetermined coat length for our poodles. This is not true for our labs. This is not true for our GRs, our golden retrievers. Um, even though the goldens will have some furnishings that is a little longer, they have a determined coat length. It will stop at a certain point. Also, the Bernese Mountain Dogs, that stops at a certain uh, point. So you have to understand the complexity that is involved when mixing these coats, right? with a coat that doesn't stop growing. So this is why, as a very general rule, but a very true rule, is that doodle coats that mix between the poodle and whatever the breeders are mixing them with is actually more difficult of a coat than the poodle or that original breed. So now you may be asking a very real question that may be on your mind, which is, Gina, uh, we've been mixing with poodles for a very long time with other breeds. Uh, let's take the Maltipoos, uh, the Cockapoos, uh, the Sheepoos. So these dogs have been around for a long time, these mixes, these designer breeds, and have kind of become a breed in themselves. So now I have a theory why these dogs don't really typically go into the category of a grooming problem, right, as the doodle problem is. So let's talk about some of my theories of why these dogs kind of get away with not having a problem of their own. So in addition to these poodle mixes being around a little longer, which does make a difference um, because it's also training the owners about um, how to manage these dogs, I also want to look at the types of dogs that they're being mixed with. So let's take a multi-poo. Uh, this is a Maltese and a poodle. The Maltese is still a fancy pants dog, right? So you're mixing two fancy pants dogs. People are already expecting that. A cockapoo is a fancy pants dog with a poodle, a fancy pants dog. People know that that's going to be advanced grooming. So the folks that are doing the little mixes with the poodles, they're already kind of a step ahead um, because they know that they're buying a fancy dog and they realize for the life of their dog, they're going to need professional grooming. Now let's take the doodles as opposed to those poos. Um, so doodles are usually, right, the bigger breeds that we're mixing the standard poodles with are Labradors and, and such. So a lot of the owners of these big breeds are looking for those big breeds, right? Those rough and tumble breeds, the sporting breeds, the dogs that you're going to go and take and throw a stick or throw a ball and that dog's going to come back, have a lot of activity, go jogging with you, right? That's that doodle personality. That's what you're going to see in a lab or a golden retriever. So that mix. So on this level, I think that a lot of folks that are uh, purchasing doodles, they're looking for this active breed, not realizing that that coat is going to be an advanced fancy pants grooming coat. 
Uh, so this is no fault of the owners, of course, because they might have grown up with a lab or a golden retriever and had that activity level and they understand what that is, but they're not uh, focusing on the fact that they are mixed with a poodle. So if you just want to kind of picture what a dinner party would look like if you invited your doodle's parents over, right? There is definitely going to be a fancy pants poodle in that party. So you have to understand that even though your dog is rough and tumble, is really sporty and will go out and play ball with you that's that lab or the golden in their brain but you have to consider and remember that part of their genetics is absolutely a standard poodle with the coat and the fanciness that that entails so let's talk about the converse of that mix and let's talk about the standard poodle now standard poodles have been used to grooming they have been standing on grooming tables for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, if you look at 17th century uh, French paintings, you will see poodles next to the kings with bows in their hair and ribbons and a nice coif done. So poodles have been standing on grooming tables for hundreds and hundreds of years. You know what breeds have not been standing on grooming tables for hundreds of years? That's right, the labs, the golden retrievers, the Bernese mountain dogs. So you have to understand with that perspective is that the Labradors, the active dogs, they're not going to really want to stand on the table and making their grooming experience difficult with matting with a lot of brushing that might be asking a lot of your sporting breed so understand that that is part of it as well as you're putting poodle hair onto a sporting breed it's kind of like putting kim kardashian's hair on a rugby player and then expecting that hair to be maintained uh that's not quite the way it's gonna work uh you have to make sure to be reasonable uh so definitely understand that because it's a mix your doodle is a mix that even though they have that poodle hair they still may have the brain of a lab and that might not be amenable to really long and uh difficult grooming sessions. And then let's go into this point that we have to kind of really discover is that there is a vicious cycle. We have to be honest here is that um, we have owners who want that snuffleupagus look, right? If you guys don't know what a snuffleupagus is, it's very long and puffy. And that's what a lot of doodle owners buy their doodles to have, right? So then they buy this dog for that look, right? But they also have an activity level with this dog. So they're not bringing the dog into grooming enough. So then they come into the groomers with um, expectations that aren't really realistic. Right now, the groomer is, sees this matted dog and they're going to tell the owner something that the owner doesn't want to hear. So then the oh, groomer is now kind of forced to do something that they really don't want to do that's not really kind to the dog, which is dematting a full body of a dog. Um, they really should be insisting that they, the dog needs to be shaved. But I have dealt with this so many times that owners get very upset with that, especially doodle owners because they want that fuzzy look, that puffy look. So now this vicious cycle uh, is created and now the dog is not having a good time. The groomers are not having a good time. The owners are not getting what they want all the time. So there's this uh, really not a good energy happening. And I will tell you, and I will be talking about this on many vlogs in the future, is that you never want bad energy in a grooming salon. Grooming always has to be kept in a good high energy. It is very important because the dogs feel it. The groomers feel it. It's a rough job. It's going to be rough all around. Uh, so we have to understand that this vicious cycle cannot be happening. We have to break it. So let's talk about solutions because they absolutely, absolutely exist and it's not very difficult. And doodle owners, again, coming from a place of love, you may not know this information from your breeder and I'm sorry that this may be new information, but if this is the first time that you're hearing it, that's okay. You can take steps to do better, uh, to do better for your pet um, and to really break that vicious cycle that is happening in a lot of salons universally um, from what I have seen. So let's talk about the solutions that we can put in place for the benefit of your pup um, and really just make it an overall better, better experience. Okay, so dear doodle owner or prospective doodle owner, budget accordingly. What breeders are not telling you is that thank you for the $2,000, $3,000 US for your new designer doodle. That's wonderful. But what they're not telling you um, is that because it's a fancy pants advanced grooming category dog, um, is that you're going to be spending about $100 US a month uh, on your pets. You're looking at at least $1,000 a year uh, US additionally for the life of your dog. So you have to budget accordingly. 
dear doodle owner, um, embrace the idea of a shorter haircut for your doodle. It's not that bad. Think about the genetic relative of your doodle, which is, let's say, a lab, and they're only this long all over. It's okay to keep your doodle this long all over. They look really, really super cute. Start embracing that idea, and not only will you save money in the long run, you're going to make a much better uh, solution for your dog, for your doodle, to keep them in a shorter haircut. You can still do a cute face with cute ears and a cute puffy tail, but definitely uh, consider that body short and embrace that idea if you can. Dear doodle owner, Believe your groomer, trust your groomer, open lines of communication with your groomer. If you don't trust your groomer, find a groomer that you can. Uh, because groomers are professional, we're gonna know and we're gonna see things that you're not gonna see. And we're gonna tell you with an open line of communication, things that you might not know about your dog and how your dog is behaving and things that make your pet react uh, on the table and what the experience of your doodle is. So definitely find a groomer that you believe. And when you find that groomer that you believe, Definitely put your trust in them and keep that line of communication open. Okay, and a note to the aspiring groomers out there uh, listening to this. Um, definitely keep that line of communication open. Definitely approach each doodle owner uh, from a place of love. A lot of owners are not being told the proper information when they purchase puppies. Uh, so now it's up to us to stay positive and to relay that information properly. So aspiring groomers, Definitely stay positive, keep that energy positive, and keep that line of communication open. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for subscribing. Click that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you soon.